Howdy champs! My name is Mohit and people today I'm going to show you how to make uh, a timer using Flash and ActionScript 3. Uh, let me upfront uh, straight away hit Control enter to render out the Swift and test the movie. So people as you can see out here the moment I click the start button uh, the needles all of the needles the three needles the hour hand the minute hand the seconds hand all start to rotate and uh, since the timer started the seconds elapsed the minutes elapsed and the hours elapsed are actually thrown into the respective text fields I can stop and reset the timer the needles are reset back to their original position and the total uh, seconds elapsed is 18 in terms of minutes it's 0 0.30 alright so let's see uh, how this timer was actually constructed uh, before I dive inside the actions panel I would want to discuss the timeline on the timeline people have used five different layers AS3 fields buttons needles background okay uh, the topmost layer is the AS3 layer obviously contains the action script which we'll discuss in the end the second layer is the fields layer okay so which actually comprises of uh, these three uh, classic static text fields that you can draw out using the text tool and three classic dynamic text fields the uh, instance names are R, minute and second okay again you can draw it out using the text tool out here I just change the option from classic static to classic dynamic for these three on the right hand side as vis a vis these three on the left hand side okay so that was the text fields there let me lock it up again okay as you can see out here uh, these six fields out here are the text fields cool uh, the next layer is the buttons layer let me hide it for you momentarily so these two buttons out here the starting and stop and reset button are on the buttons layer okay and uh, I've given them instance names of start btn and reset btn I've changed the label to start and for the second button I've changed the label to stop and reset but people you can notice that I made the second button uh, disabled up front it's not enabled cool uh, the next layer is the needles layer okay and uh, let me hide it for you momentarily there are three needles out here uh, they've been given instance name of uh, s needle for seconds needle uh, m needle for minutes needle and h needle for the r needle okay they are nothing but uh, I've actually used the line tool and use different stroke thicknesses to uh, you know draw out these uh, three needles okay and uh, just uh, converted them to symbols given them instance names cool uh, right so see I don't want to make it too basic a tutorial where I show you uh, where I draw out everything I'm just telling you verbatim what I did right now the last layer is the backgrounds layer okay it has to be the last layer people so that it's pushed right at the bottom it should become the bottom most layer and uh, it's only for the decoration for the aesthetics right which is this this uh, uh, you know this this layer for the this body of the clock is the background layer all right cool so people um, it's a very uh, you know simple structure that we have just just remember that the uh, stop and reset button is upfront disabled whereas the start button is enabled right uh, where did, uh, did I get these buttons from I got it from the components panel out here under the user interface uh, folder right so the only thing that is, remains for me to uh, explain is the action script which is uh, around 30 lines pretty simple pretty straightforward okay I've created a one second uh, timer out here so variable timer of the type timer is equal to new timer basically creating a new instance of the timer class okay I've left out a lot uh, I've left a lot of uh, comments for you uh, also this project is available as a free download from my website qualitylessons.net forward slash downloads uh, I've added an event listener to the variable timer okay and every time the timer fires I would want a function timer handler to fire okay and then I'm rotating the S needle the longest needle or the seconds needle using the rotation property uh, and I'm making it equal to plus is equal to 6 so every time the, the timer fires I would want the rotation to increase by 6 degrees so on a careful look of the analog clock you'll see that every time uh, there's a tick the uh, the seconds uh, hand 
rotates by 6 degrees. Okay. At the same time, I've set M needle, which is the minutes needle, through the rotation property should increase uh, plus is equal to 6 by 60, simply because the minute uh, needle is 60 times slower than the uh, seconds needle. You, you can actually do your mathematical computation and you'll arrive at the same formula. At the same time, the R needle is 12 times slower than the minutes needle. That is why this formula applies. So every time there's a tick, uh, 6 by 60 by 12, since the R needle uh, runs 12 times slower than the minute needle. Okay. Then uh, through the text property people, I'm pushing in the uh, classic dynamic, uh, dynamic text fields certain values. The timer dot current count, which is uh, the first time the timer fires, it's one, then it's two, then it's three, the third time it fires. The uh, next time we have a ticket, it becomes four, which actually also corresponds to the number of seconds. So in the seconds text field, which is people out here, okay, this one. Uh, so this is hours, this is seconds, this is minutes. I'm sorry. Okay, in the seconds text field, I'm pushing in uh, timer dot current count, which is one, two, three, four, the cycle of the timer basically. Uh, since there are 60 seconds in a minute, I'm using the formula to fetch the minutes as timer.current count divided by 60. And for the R, to fetch the uh, you know, total number of hours that have elapsed ever since the start button was clicked, I'm using the formula timer.current count by 60 by 60 because there are 60 minutes in an hour. Okay, then we use the two fix method. Uh, what this method actually does is uh, it makes sure that the, uh, the you know the digits after the decimal number are uh, truncated to not more than two. Okay, since when I divide the current count by sixty, I'm gonna get a fraction. At the same time, out here in all the text fields, I've used the empty string here and here as well. The reason is this is a number. You add, need to add a string to a number before you can push it inside the text field. Second minute and R are three text fields. Classic and dynamic. Okay. So very simple formula people, actually, I've added event listeners to the start button and the reset button. Every time the uh, user clicks these buttons, a function uh, start handler and a reset handler are fired respectively. Uh, through the function start handler, I'm starting the timer. I'm enabling the start button, but I'm disabling the reset button. Rather, uh, I'm uh, uh, disabling the start button, enabling the reset button. The opposite I'm doing out here when somebody clicks the reset button, the reset handler is fired or it works and the timer is reset. The current count is brought to zero. The seconds needle, the minutes needle and the R needle are set back to zero, the original position. Uh, the start button is uh, enabled and the reset button is disabled. So it's just a, you know, a 30 odd line of script. Not too big at all. Very simple people. Uh, there's some mathematical computation out here, which if you have a good uh, logic, uh, you know, and a lot of common sense, you should be able to understand this. So the formula is that the second needle is uh, 60 times faster than the minute needle, which conversely means that the minute needle is uh, 60 times slower than the uh, second needle, and the R needle is 12 times slower than the minute needle. So this this uh, fact was used out here at the same time uh, in a minute there are 60 seconds and in an hour there are 60 minutes I've used that fact to you know uh, bring up this formula out here so people uh, a very simple straightforward script so before I terminate the tutorial let me hit control enter once again to show you the publish preview click the start button this button gets disabled this gets enabled the total number of hours, minutes, and seconds uh, elapsed are shown up out here. Let me click the reset, uh, stop and reset button. The needles are reset, and the total time taken by the timer is thrown in out here. Seconds elapsed, eight minutes elapsed, 0.13. All right. So, people, I hope you uh, enjoyed this tutorial, and I also hope that you keep coming back for more tutorials. You have a good day, guys. Bye bye. Peace.